So I'm Austin Olin. My name is Ilya Carolyn. And we decided like the arena we focused on was child abuse and neglect primarily here in the Southwest Indiana area. And I just wanted to start by asking everybody, like how many of you are from Indiana? Good amount. Well, I'm from in, I'm from Evansville here in Indiana, and I just found out that Indiana actually has the second highest child abuse rate in the entire country. It's about 18.6 victims per 1,000 uh, children. This more than doubles the national average, 9.1 victims per 1,000 children. And if you're from Evansville area, you're actually on the border of the highest in the entire country, which is Kentucky. So here in Evansville, the tri-state area, we actually are right in the heart of this, this problem in this entire region. And this facts like this and our research and our expert profiles led us to our problem pain statement, our specific problem statement, which is there's currently not enough focused effort on rehabilitating and counseling the parents who are inflicting abuse on or neglect on their children in the Southwest Indiana area, nor are the current efforts affordable to these individuals. And that last part, part nor are the current efforts affordable to these individuals was something that we just kind of added in the last week talking to our new expert profiles and it's something that we'll dive into here in a couple minutes but first we're going to talk about the current approaches um, so some of those places that are mentioned here uh, their main goal is to reunite the families as quickly as possible and so some of those places are holly's house uh, child protective services um, by bin center and with insight and so with insight is one of the places that i talk to i talk to karen she's the licensed um, clinical work on she's been for over 22 years now. Um, so she was saying that the main problem is actually the low income and um, not enough funding from the government. And so um, uh, people just simply can't, can't afford the counseling services or the insurance just doesn't cover those um, services. And so just to show you how big this problem is, um, within Inside had over 80 cases last month um, on different behavioral problems and emotional problems. And so uh, some of the causal factors, uh, as I mentioned, the poverty, it actually might be linked to the race as well. Um, uh, emotional abuse in the past, the origin of parents, um, post uh, stress disorders and other um, things like that. And so although Indiana has, is getting more money every year towards uh, to fix those problems, the funding is still very limited from the government. And just to kind of emphasize what he was talking about in terms of lack of uh, income for these people, this is a graph that we created, but we got the information from the Lampian Center and Jennifer Childers, who's the developmental director at the Lampian Center, which is a organization here in Evansville that focuses on counseling and helping people through traumatic experiences that have happened either in the past or that they're going through right now. A lot of their cases actually are child abuse victims, and a lot of times they're the adults they come in and they are talking about what happened to them in the past, about 20, 30 years ago. And uh, the graph shows that over 75% of the patients that they have actually come from uh, families who have an annual household income of less than $20,000 a year. And that was something that we, we kind, of ex like kind of expected to happen, but was also you know, a lot higher than what we thought because that is obviously a major factor financial distress and all that is a major factor in why this keeps happening. And another reason or problem gap that we found in this arena was that the focus is usually on the punishment on the parents, not the rehabilitation of the parents. And so 2013 Indiana had 160,878 total referrals, which means that's how many times someone called in about child abuse or neglect. 2017 that number jumped over 16,000 more. And uh, so it's continually increasing over the last five, 10 years. And one of the things that we noticed was that there's mainly three penalties for the parents. They are either fined, and these fines can range from hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars. They're incarcerated, which is the most common penalty for it, and that you know, it can last months, years, tens of years in extreme cases. Or they're put on probation, which is basically just they're told that they can't see their children for however many years, months, or whatever. But see they're punished but they're not actually being counseled or helped through these situations and obviously they need to be punished it's a crime and it's a horrible thing they need to be punished but if they're just simply incarcerated and then brought back out into the world months years later then what's to say they're not going to get right back into their normal routine and continue the problem and so we're kind of focusing on trying to stop that problem like right 
in its tracks and worrying about the parents who are actually inflicting the pain on the children. And that is the rest of the end of our presentation. Thanks.